What the hell was that? Like, so the Mariners are down 5 nothing. Okay, fine. It's pretty much an off game at that point because they were just absolutely depleted from the Baltimore series where they lost two in a row. And, of course, the Sunday game was just immensely frustrating. And if you want to know how frustrating that was, just go back to my previous video where I did give an in-depth analysis. And the next thing you know, the Mariners are coming back. And then they miraculously took the lead to make it 6-5. to five, And it seemed like, wow, looks like the Mariners are back in business. They are back on track. And before we even get into that, it's not like the game was even... The game was just disappointing. Like, you had Logan Gilbert just completely not being the road away Logan Gilbert that we know and love, since he is a better pitcher on the road. And then you had the Mariners' offense just doing absolutely nothing throughout the game. But fortunately, they did make a comeback. You had Julio Rodriguez stepping up. And then you had Josh Rojas getting an RBI, which I guess making the Paul Seawald trade much more worth it at that moment. But then there was a time where I was just completely just a loss of hope. Because Andres Munoz did pitch the last two games against Baltimore, especially on non-save situations, Matt Brash was the one that was forced to be the closer, and I just don't think he's closer material yet. Until he can develop those other two pitches that I did talk about, I just don't see him as a closer. But they had no choice but to use him because Andres Munoz was not available. And he would have been available if Scott Service just didn't use Andres Munoz. Shouldn't have used him in extra innings on Saturday. And then you also shouldn't have used him on Sunday on another non-save situation. So basically you wasted Munoz for nothing. But this is where it gets frustrating because as soon as the Mariners have an inspiring comeback where you had Jared Kelnick hit the home run against Chicago and then you had Colton Wong hitting a home run against the Minnesota Twins and then you had Josh Rojas finally actually making himself useful, which he has been playing a little bit well since that Baltimore series. And the next thing you know, Matt Brash, he just completely blows it. It's like two strikes on each of his hitters and got nothing out of it. Like, that's just the frustrating part where nobody wants to talk about how non-clutch this bullpen really is. But all the blame is just going to go into the offense because they didn't score runs early. But here's the thing. You can't really expect a very inconsistent offense like this to completely score every game. Like, I don't think I've ever seen it where the bullpen gets any kind of criticism. It seems that they don't. And I think it's just because they have a lot of cool guys. You have Andres Munoz, who throws 103s. You got Matt Brash, who's got really cool pitches and forms. But none of these pitchers really have command. And the other pitchers, like, yeah, you like Topa. You might like Spire. But they don't really have, like, a playoff material kind of, kind of instinct. And that's why... I think the bullpen is actually the real problem because is it really the offense's fault that they made all that hard work to make those comebacks only to see the bullpen just completely just throw it away? Like, I know I'm crying for it, but if you really think about it, the bullpen has not been good, especially those last three games. They blew it in extras. Yes, you can blame it on the offense, but can you really just blame the offense every time like I just think blaming the offense on everything is just a very I just think it's a very lazy assessment where you everything is just placed on the offense but they're not but you don't see the fans or even Seattle sports media putting any accountability on like Scott service with his awful decisions on his bullpen and then you've got not only that but also very questionable lineups because I just don't think that Julio Rodriguez should be a leadoff hitter. Like, it's only worked a few games. But other than that, he just whiffs at everything. I mean, it worked probably today, but even but earlier in the game, it wasn't working at all. So, where to go from here? Well, you gotta win all three of them against the Royals. You're, you're definitely not gonna split with them. You gotta win all of them. And today would have been nice to win because 
You need to get the sweep against the Royals to make up for the Orioles series. But I know I'm going just completely all over the place, but when you have an emotionally charged game, I mean, what do you expect? I mean, I'm going to have a little bit of ranting like this. So to make it all easier, you've got... This game was already going to have problems. Like, Munoz not available because Service wasted him two games in a row when he wasn't even needed. And then you got the bullpen who just happens to melt down. And even when they don't melt down, there's always a drama going on. But going forward, like, the first thing Scott Service should do, don't make Julio Rodriguez a leadoff hitter. Give that to someone else. Give give that to someone else. Like give it to Josh Rojas, give it to Cade Marlowe, or give it to Dylan Moore. But not Julio Rodriguez. But those are really all of my thoughts on this game. And it's very disappointing that the Mariners had like another inspiring comeback, especially by this offense, only to fall short once again. But those are my thoughts. Hit that subscribe button, hit that like button if you got to the end of this video. And thanks for watching.